It's all six. And I think if Von Williams can do it, I can do it. So suppose we do uh, an improvisation where we'll let the melody sing on this, this stop, and we'll have the accompaniment play a sixth beneath. End of story. But we're allowed to uh, invite some ornamentation, trills, um, passing notes, and so on, into the melody. Let's see what happens. And while we're at it, let's invite a pedal point to the party. So here it is. I forgot what I was doing a few times there, but for the most part, we, we played a, a sixth beneath. We could also play a third beneath. That's another beautiful, sweet sounding interval. So let's imagine that for a moment. What would that sound like? We'll get some different chords this time. And so perhaps a better improvisation would involve some thirds and some sixths along the way instead of, but again, if we start out with our five claps and four beats, we'll start to hear some things that are really beautiful, that work really well, and we'll remember those when we allow ourselves a little bit more freedom and take the next step. That's the idea of how this, this all um, uh, transpires and grows. Uh, Certainly, we can think about ornamentation also in things that move a bit more quickly. And again, most of what we can do in the accompaniment can be those same intervals that we use. This time, instead of two voices, though, we had three vo voices going. So all of this, now I could practice that fast improvisation by all means at a much slower tempo. Just the same way you do when you're learning a piece. You don't always learn a fast piece fast or a slow piece slow, right? As we're e evolving and growing we can move, uh, move along in all those kinds of directions. What about, what if we were to change this sort of boxy meter that we talked about at the beginning with all the quarters and halves and to expand or contract the rhythmic feel of the measure? So let's say, for example, we wanted to do a really cool variation in seven, eight, all right? What might happen if we did that? So let's just take the melody for a moment. You, feel, you feeling that with me? That's pretty cool. You'd probably have to pay Charles Callahan about $10 for that variation. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. He's living really well, and you're, and you're helping. Let's see, let's see. So, is he here? Oh my gosh! I...
You know, something like this. All we're doing is robbing and stealing a beat. Sometimes we do that by accident, but it's nice <laughs> when we do it. It's nice when we do it intentionally, right? And it's, it can be fun. It takes, it takes this melody and gives it a little bit more sparkle. It gives it a little bit more life. And that's certainly within keeping, if, when we know the text for most, uh, uh, that most of, of us are familiar with, it, it fits right in, it flows right in. I can't think the composer would be disappointed with us. Um, what if we wanted to adapt in one of our variations this into a minor key? So let's think for a moment. What absolutely must change when we move from a major to a minor key? Which scale degree absolutely must change? The third. And so to be honest, that's the only one that absolutely must change. What are the ones that we could or could not change? Six and seven, very good, you're almost there. So if we were to play this melody um, in a minor key, it sounds very much like the old one, doesn't it? Until there. And then we get to imagine here about these E's and F's, what, what do we want to do? Um, so let's take a look at some of the possibilities. Let's go back to our thirds and sixths for a moment. Oops. And of course, there's so much opportunity to try all of the possibilities with those E naturals, F naturals, E flats, F sharps, and to see which ones happen to work for you in any given phrase, or, um, and whether you want them to repeat or you want them to change as you're going through. All of that's uh, by all means a possibility. Many pieces that we know and love have ritornellos, those kind of recurring, um, overture kind of passages or interludes that happen before at the end and codas and so on. Um, what would be cool here is maybe to use some of the in energy of the third line of the tune as a ritornello and then to have that appear to punctuate each line of the piece. So what if we let our ritornello be in 3-4 to take us out of the box of the four four time of the piece. So we're going to make it from our ritornello in 3-4, we're going to use some of the ideas from the last line. So I'm just going to do some passing neighbor tones around the melody. Hear that again. To catch that, okay. So here we go. Something like this, it brings a little bit more of the flavor and the feel and the flow and the dance of this song to us and o opens us up. So all of these uh, are, are by all means possibilities.